guest is here not in uh, blue or anything else, but her real, in her real colors, which are wonderful. Uh, she's currently starring in the hit Broadway musical Follies. Uh, it was nominated, by the way, for 11 Tony Awards. And she's received a nomination for Best Actress in a, in a Musical. I almost said in a Muscatel. What's wrong with me? Please welcome one of the most talented and lovely actresses I ever heard of, Miss Alexis Smith. <laughs> I'm all out of breath from my... It's nice to be back on your class show again. <laughs> <laughs> Man in the wings with his clothes half off, getting yes. dressed. I just hope I didn't shock anyone backstage. <laughs> I had uh, pie everywhere. I know. Uh, from the waist up. Yes. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Dick. Good to see you. Thank you. Say, you, uh, was this true about 11 Tony Awards, or did I misread something No, the show? that is true, and I think uh, more than any other musical received, happily, and... and uh, we're all in the company. We're all very, very pleased. And are you? Very are you or I was going to ask if you were pleased, depressed, excited, indifferent, or any of the above. All of them, I think. I even indifferent? Oh, no, not oh, indifferent. I slipped one no, in. No, no. You no, want to win. That's what I want to say. Do you want to win? Yes. 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 Oh, you did, did you ever hear anyone say they wanted to lose? Oh, masochists. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not Probably. a masochist. You're not. But you're, you're up, and so is, uh, I mean, among the other things in the show, you're uh, among the things that are up, among yes. the people that are up, are you? Dorothy. And Dorothy Collins. Also is a, a best actress. That's right. And in the Jean, same show. Yes. And are you Jean. putting pins in little dolls? In each other? <laughs> no, I don't. It is a peculiar thing, you know, because actually I think any time you... We are now in competition. Well, anyone who is nominated for a Tony in any category, of course, is competing. Mm -hmm. And it's peculiar to compete uh, volu involuntarily. I think n normally somebody says you want to play tennis, yeah. and you say yes, and you you're going to compete with someone. But in this instance, you are it's thrust upon you, and suddenly you are com competing. And, of course, I'm sure everyone's hoping to win. Yeah, it's funny to think of it as a race, because acting isn't that. I mean, you don't try to beat the other people out. No, indeed not. I, mean, you I don't know, know how you could go on stage each night. And win. I, I mean, yes, get there Dorothy first. <laughs> get your lines out fast. Yeah, get to the calls first. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a good award show, the Tony show. It's, I mean, it's a, every year they, they do a good show. Yes, I, I recall last year it was a wonderful show. And they yeah. started each, each year, I think, started in the 20s or something, the 50 years of the Tonys. And it's, uh, it's very effective. And, of course, uh, I think... Uh, it lends itself perhaps more to uh, um, a television spectacular than, than perhaps the Oscar does because of, of the yeah. musicals that are involved in the, in the show itself. I, I like the Oscar show, though, for the sappy things that people say when they come out. I would love to know what Liza Minnelli didn't say. Remember, she said, I'm not doing what's on the card. Would you flip it over? Oh, no, I didn't you see those, that. Those I things they that. write for Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you studying now? The last time you were here, you were using every spare moment uh, to master languages and learn canoeing or I forget what the things the various <laughs> things were now but there were a lot of them well I continue to do that uh, not this week as a matter of fact because I'm kind of involved in fittings and and appearances <coughs> and that sort of thing because mm -hmm. of the Tonys but um, dancing of course and singing and um, solfege and Spanish and uh, solfege yes uh, that has to do with music mm -hmm. the 20 questions <laughs> um, it's um, so fage. It has to do with ha ah, 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 ah. Intervals, yes. Yeah. Mm. Guess we cleared that up. <laughs> I, don't, I honestly, if I had to explain solfege, I don't suppose I could. You're studying music. Well, it has to do with ear training, and oh. uh, it's interesting that that's yeah. that uh, many many professional singers, as a matter of fact, have not studied it if they've studied mm. exclusively. But then one can, if they're very adept at it, can read music mm. cold and without accompaniment, and that's uh, I'm. I'm not developed at that point, but that's quite an accomplishment, and certainly yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sure that serious singers in, in opera, that sort of, sort of thing, would tend to study it more than... And what will you be able to do uh, once you know solfege gold? Uh, well, firstly, it, it, helps me, it helps me as far as, as uh, singing, the limited kind of singing that I do, it helps me enormously, and, and, and my ear is more acute, and I tend not to sing flat or sharp than be more true. Yeah. And aside from that, it's... it's um, I enjoy music more as a result of knowing more about music. You just hear more. Yes, really. you really hear more. It's the same. Yeah. But we, we, it's interesting to me. We have, uh, God gave us five senses that are really quite extraordinary if you stop and think about them. You want to stop and think about them? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to stop and think about them for a moment. Uh, we're back, we're back. Yes. And uh, we're talking about the Tony Awards before, and somebody said that uh, anything that, any prize that there is available, uh, if you were to look at the number of people who haven't gotten it, and the list of the people who have, 
Uh, we were just talking about this during the break. It would be hard to tell who were the, what was the winning list and what was the losing list. Yes, you know what indeed. I mean? Well, particularly, I have a list of the You theater, did that. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Ethel Merman has never won a Tony. Lynn Fontan, Lee J. Cobb, Marlon Brando, Sir Lawrence Olivier, Sir John Gielgud, Danny Kaye, Barbara Streisand, Julie Andrews, George C. Scott, he wouldn't have accepted it even if he had. <laughs> and Catherine Hepburn. Now you almost want all, people... all, all No, well, yes, all losers, I suppose. Those are all That's losers. quite a list of losers, isn't it? That's why no one's ever heard of any of those names. <laughs> <laughs> they never got anywhere. Have you ever won an Emmy? Yes, I won one Emmy. I for... figure one is plenty, you know. Yes, no, for what was that? Uh, I had a television show. When? And it was, uh, I was, um... Are we on TV now? Oh, oh, it's going hello out there. No, I won uh, I, my daytime show, uh, Beat Hollywood Squares. <laughs> That's the truth. Now, you've not won for nighttime. Oh, no, I didn't want to hog them. No, I see. Have you been nominated? Oh, yes, I'm always nominated. Yes. How many, how many times have you lost? Uh, what was the question how and what was the answer? <laughs> how many times have you lost? I don't consider it losing. I, I, I passed the honor to other people. Oh, I oh, That's marvelous. Yeah. I like that. Because I felt that uh, various, like, like, poor immigrant people and all would like to win one occasionally. And, and, uh, Such as? Uh, people from other countries. Uh, to whom did you, to whom did you pass? <laughs> land. And so I, I, I graciously uh, rigged it so I would lose year after year. I see. <laughs> Do you know, <laughs> know what I'm talking about? Michael Bennett, who uh, did the choreography and co-directed our show and is considered by most, I'm sure, the best choreographer on Broadway, has, uh, or among the best, certainly, no. uh, has, uh, is a five-time loser, I think. Has never won a, a Tony. He can hardly keep his head up a bit. I know, and he's, <laughs> he was in Paris and he said he really didn't know whether he wanted to come all the way back to lose again or not. Is it? <laughs> Well, it shouldn't be considered losing. I mean, like you are saying before, it's not a race. It isn't as if there are 100 yards in acting. And some people run all the 100 yards, and some people run 99. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't it be interesting if they could prove how uh, Laurence Olivier fell short of Burt Lancaster? I you know, the you year that Laurence Olivier was beaten by Burt Lancaster in the Oscars. Think? I mean, if they could actually show, if yes. it were an actual race, then they could presumably show exactly what Olivier left out that Lancaster had in. But, no you know, the interesting thing is, I think, that there is no way to judge, really, and that's what art is about, that one cannot put, measure it really yeah. precisely to, a, you know, any degree of who is better or who is not or what, and there's so many elements involved, which makes it fa any art form fascinating. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's why it's different from sports. And mm -hmm. Chaplin, you know, as you know, obviously everyone in the world knows now, never won an Oscar till this year, and it was honorary Oscar. I always thought what a temptation it would have been for somebody all those years, particularly when he was in trouble, uh, to take his uh, Oscar and say, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing you fantasize about. I I'm mailing this to Charlie Chaplin. Because he just... Uh, with Hedda Hopper and everybody sitting right down front. Oh, hated Chaplin all those years. That would have been... Would have been fun. lovely. <laughs> because we're all indebted to, you know, all who preceded us, of course, in, yeah. in this or any other profession. But, uh, and his contribution, goodness knows, was enormous to the yeah. picture industry. I had said something funny the other day Dan, with Dan Daly, as a matter of fact, and Dan said he always felt that Jackie Coogan had done more for Chaplin than Chaplin had done <laughs> for Jackie Coogan. It's a novel it's opinion. It's a funny thought. Yeah. Jackie Coogan is, is the little kid in The Kid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hey, has you, have you ever had problems because of your height? I was no, have you? <laughs> yeah. Get away from me. <laughs> I might knock some more of it off. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I just meant I couldn't help noticing when you walked out that you're just sickeningly tall. You know? <laughs> oh, I mean, should we go on to another yeah, subject? People go to bed short all over the world, and I just wonder. <laughs> I don't know. You know I, I wondered if you ever got to, if they, if forever, you know, if you ever, if you ever couldn't play a role because there was a a, a man who was. Um, a shrimp, as you would probably call it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I have had that problem. And, the, you know, the gentleman used to use apple boxes. They, say, they well, always true. say yes, that. Get an apple box to, what? to see an, playing love scenes with the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It must have looked so funny to the crew to see a stubby little fellow standing on, on a box, uh, uh, kissing a statuesque person like yourself. Yes, well, I never wore shoes, of course, you know, until finally I worked with um, Joel McRae, who was very tall. Even to me, he's tall. You know, he's, I think he's about six five, and it was just wonderful because it was the first time I, I wore, wore heels, and, and I would kiss him and look up. You know that great line that ladies, short ladies, get when they kiss men. You know, which I never stretches your neck yes, out. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
Joel McRae is terrific. I, I, I saw Buffalo Bill. I, I think I saw it 16 times or 15. I've forgotten whether Jim McConnell saw it 16 and I saw it 15 or which. He was Who's my, Jim McConnell? Well, he was my friend in Nebraska oh, and we would go to... Yes. <laughs> You, you, you'd like him. He's normal size. Yes, he's tall. <laughs> yeah. We have a station break. We'll be right back. <laughs> the Dick Cabot Show with Gloria Swanson, Alexis Smith, Elsa Lanchester, and Jeanette Rankin will continue. I I'm quite sure that if I uh, asked everyone sitting in this theater to name great ladies of the screen, on everybody's list would be... Gloria Swanson, Miss Gloria Swanson, as they always say about ladies of the screen. And uh, she's an extraordinary woman uh, at 72, uh, still a working actress drawing sellout crowds uh, on Butterfly, uh, or Broadway if you prefer, or on Butterflies with Broadway is free. Let's start this sentence again, boys and girls. Butterflies are free is the name of the show, and here's the lovely and remarkable Gloria Swanson. <laughs> Not 72. You're 73? I'm always a, a year older than the age after March. Th then, then the, this oh, is 72, isn't it? A year older than the century itself. Yeah. Than, the, than the 20th century. Yeah. That is astounding. 73 instead of uh, in March. I was 72. May I say I admire you so much, Miss Smith. And uh, tremendously, I should say, I've always wanted to be your, your height. Oh. Yes, when I was playing femme fatales, it was kind of silly. A half pint like me walking around as if I were... Well, where is your height? Where does the thing come on a scale in your head when you stand on the, gym, well, on the gymnasium scale? Well, I did scale? get about an inch and a half when I was about 28. I grew. I think it was because I was having a lot of massage, and I think they pull on your leg and your spines. You know, a lot of policemen used to go about uh, when they weren't quite six feet, and we used to have them. They had to be six feet. And so they'd go and get a lot of massage and stretching, then run quickly, and they were six feet tall. I've heard of that. They, yes, uh, that's true. Cop stretcher. So I was about, uh, <laughs> I was only Mary Pickford's height, actually, but she always affected being short, wearing uh, short heels or no heels at all, and I was going around in these tremendous things, three-inch heels. Why I didn't kill myself, I don't know. Falling off your heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You, you look so wonderful, as everyone knows. Uh, I, I, and, of course, they always add for 73. Um, of course, but, but you, I, look, you look wonderful for 43. It is a question of look. I, I wish everybody could feel as well as I do. I really do. I have a sense of well-being. I, I think you, you feel better than I do. You've got, <laughs> you, you have amazing well, energy and well, that I have. And all of that. Uh, how many times a year do you eat? You're so thin. <laughs> no, I have youngsters that are working in the play with me. You know, butterflies are free. There are three of them, and they're also tired, and they're also exhausted, and they have uh, flu or, or virus X or something all the time. They keep looking at me. When is she going to collapse? You know, it doesn't happen. Well, I better shut up or, you know, I mustn't brag, must I? How, how, do you, how, have you, uh, how are you affected by this time of year, March 15th and all that? Oh, oh, oh taxes? I'm just seeing is what that a, I've is been. that a tactless you thing? You know, I'm a, I'm a George. Do you know what that means, to be a George? Do is that a zodiac sign? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know. It's a new kind I'm, of astrology. I'm, Mar I'm uh, Aries. No, what it is is that people who do things and don't talk about them but do them are called Georges, and a lot of people complain and then they look to a George to do something about it so I've been yapping and yelling about food for years and years but because I have a sense of well-being that I think people have if they eat properly and don't have to eat poisons and how how can you be happy if you're worried sick to death if you have taxes that are unreasonable no inequitable is the best word for it and so I've been down in Washington a George again and uh, at the hearings and um, speaking my piece about this did you know that single people pay more taxes than married people I, I know that you know something about this and i don't know much about it but um well, it's how, how does most, that work well it's unfortunate because so, let us assume and most you know men decide to depart from this planet before their wives mm -hmm. and then what happens is that uh, they paid a, a combined tax when they were married Mm -hmm. And then when uh, he goes bye-bye, she has the inheritance tax on the money that he already ma made, you see, they made together. Yeah. And then on top of that, she has to pay a bigger tax because in, as a single person now, she pays more. And this is what's so unfair because there are millions and millions of people who are either widowed or a widower or a widow, and also you have a divorced person who has to mm -hmm. pay more. Now they've got a new one, which is if two people work in the family, the married couple, yeah. Now they have to pay um, more, and uh, it's it, it, the you know that there are 33 
feet of books on taxes, and not even the experts can possibly know what happened. You know, it's all crept up on us, you know. It's really, yeah. nobody minds paying taxes, providing they're equitable, but you, and it's unconstitutional to uh, say, well, because you're single, you have to pay more than a married person, mm -hmm. uh, or any of that. It's because you're supposed to be taxed on yeah. income, not on, on your... Uh, the bracket that you're in, in, in well, life. What's the theory behind that? Is it considered some sort of luxury to be single? And uh, you're supposed well, to you be know, willing to pay for no, the No, but you know, now it? the people, that, the married people who as a couple, uh, single tax, if they separate and live in sin, they can have a lesser tax than if they have now, because if they both work, it's not That's better. where they get the expression sin tax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What's wrong with me? I'm may, sorry. May I really say People who think of things like that should have the decency not to say them. No, I think it's wonderful. I'm sorry. But if what, is, what should be done is, if anyone is really interested, and stop yapping about it, and stop just talking about it, uh -huh. but simply do something about getting a hold of a representative from Arkansas whose name is Wilbur Mills, and he's chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. I, it's a rather formidable thing to go down to Washington and have to talk to all those men. But you've actually done it. You've gone I just down and did put in your, well, well, your two My last day it. off was a Monday. Yeah. And uh, so I went down there, and, and everybody uh, who has wants to speak can do so, and help because they need support. You mm -hmm. see, the public, in a way, will only help them, and uh, it's a call of Koch's bill. He's a, uh, from New York City. He's a representative. Mm -hmm. K-O-C-H. K -O -C -H, yeah. And uh, that number is... Uh, um, our, um, no, HR, uh, 850. Now, just go to your, just write letters to Wilbur Mills in the, in, in the House of Representatives in, in Washington, D.C., and say you don't want to pay these taxes, because it's something, it's, it, something really has to be done about it. For instance, I have worked since I was 14 and a half years old. You know that I've been single most of the time, although I've been married a few times. <clears throat> um, well, I always supported anybody anyway within the perimeter of my life. And so, uh, I imagine I can't even take depreciation at a certain age. A horse can, but I can't. Depreciation? Yes, of course, as you grow older. But uh, aside from that, I... <laughs> well, you can. You can with everything else, an automobile, a home, and the whole thing. So why shouldn't I be able depreciation to? Depreciation on, on, on your yes, parts? Yes, don't you know? Well, no, I mean, how would you? Well, no, uh, but your opportunities in the performing yeah. arts might be lessened as oh, you grow sure. older yeah. and your I mean, talents, etc. Yeah. You might become hard of hearing. You say to the other actor, hmm, I didn't hear you. Yeah. And uh, a lot of things could happen. And then also, the, you have to pay uh, in advance. Now, estimated tax. Have you any idea what you're going to make next year? I haven't the slightest. Depends on how long the play lasts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's and do you know that you are, uh, you're penalized 6% if you, if you don't estimate it properly? Now, you know this is madness. Well, that really, is. the men who are trying to do something about this do want support, and they know, too, that they have to do something about it. The election is coming up, you know, and really and truly this is important, this taxing. Be because yeah. we talk about uh, the United States is, is, uh, United States is uh, spending $20 billion or something here or there and the other way. Not, they don't have a sue to spend. Who's spending it? We are. It's taking it from, from us. And the people who can't cover it up, like, for instance, I know that I've paid more than oil men and a lot of millionaires and a lot of uh, corporations, incidentally, and crooks. I've paid more in my life. Why? Because it's taken from the source. It's taken from us. Now, if you don't have a salaried thing, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners here are salaried, where it's taken right at the source, they don't even see it if they saw it. That's another story. Yeah. There's a I life... Do, 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 you, do you know? You must excuse me. Uh, we'll come right back. Ow. See, our teleprompter is fuse blue, and so I, whatever I'm supposed to read, I can't see at the moment. So think of something delightful. Here we are again. Well, just, just let me You're close gonna... in this text thing by yeah. saying, a little woman older than I am, it's hard to believe anyone is, uh, is responsible for really one person. You know it's curious in life. People say, oh, I couldn't do anything about this, and I couldn't do anything about that. Well, look what Nader did. Now, Miss Vivian Kill uh, Killams has been at this tax thing now for, well, as far as I know, since the middle f uh, 50s, when I first met her. We were on Mrs. Roosevelt's program. That's when I was talking about, why can't I take depreciation that many years ago? Think what it would be now. Mm -hmm. And she, single-handed, no, seems to know more about the taxes and the Constitution, I 
promise you, than anyone I've run into. Mm -hmm. They are so complicated, they're like a crazy quilt. I know there are and companies that have people who do nothing but study taxes I know, and, all and did you ever look really at a form? You wouldn't be, you know, bright as you are, you couldn't, nobody can. You have to have experts and you have to pay all that money out for them. I think they help complicate them. <laughs> but Miss Kellams is really the woman who has started this whole thing and she has people from all over the United States now because there are millions and millions of single people and the youngsters too are going to object to it. It doesn't matter as long as you tax the income and, and it's mm -hmm. proportioned, but not the person and what they're doing. This is unfair, absolutely unfair, because you're married or you're single. Suppose you can't get a hus husband, as she points out. And are you thinking of marrying again? Or? <laughs> I mean, have, have, taxes you, have, have you ruled it out as a possibility? Or? I rule nothing out. Nothing's impossible in my Good life. Nothing. Not I, that I think everyone should be married, by the way. No, I don't either. Yeah. And uh, most of my life has been, uh, I've been mom and papa and husband and wife. But uh, yeah. I don't mind that. I find it very exciting. <clears throat> well, Gloria, Miss Swanson, can I call Gloria, you Gloria? I've known please. you for some time. What, did they tell you you were crazy to leave Hollywood when you did? You, you uh, left all that glamour and all of that and came back to New York at a time when... Uh, you were in 38, no. immersed in Hollywood. No, no, I had a, quite a, a discussion, we'll call it, with a man called Harry Cohen. And mm -hmm. uh, he would, I would say, would be the reason for my uh, leaving Hollywood, because he uh, was looking for a story for me, and I brought him many of them. And finally, I found a, a treatment, and I read it to be sure he would. I wasn't quite sure at that point whether he could read. I was so angry with him. And so I read it. And uh, finally, he said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. So tomorrow came, and I found myself in the middle of my bedroom, which was fairly large, with a long cord telephone call wound around myself, screaming at the top of my lungs, because I said to him, well, what happened? And he said, well, I, it couldn't be any good, because David Selznick wants to sell it. And with that, I lost my mind. I, you can't imagine, I had finished Sadie Thompson some time back, and of course it was yeah. a silent picture, but I had remembered the words, and I used them all on him, and said, get me out of this place, just get me out of here, and I came to New York, found an apartment, went back there and put tags on all the furniture, and said, you keep this place, I don't want any more of it, guess what it was, what? one year later, Warner Brothers bought this thing that couldn't be any good because David Selznick wanted oh, <laughs> to I bet sell I know it. Who it was. Yeah, Stark Victory. And it was her big starring picture, and that's Betty what Davis. happened. That's right. Yeah. That's so right that is why I left. In 1938, I came to, uh, to New York, and I've been here paying taxes ever since. That's what makes me a citizen. Yes. A little. Oh, before 38? No, 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 no. I think that's so admirable to have had the kind of career that you did, the extraordinary career in films, and then to come to have the courage to come to the theater. I think courage. It's just... You know what happened when I moved here? What? They wanted me to do a play, and I'd say, "Oh, of course," and I'd be all excited about. It. They'd bring the contract, and I'd get terrified, terrified, and I'd run off. In those days, you could go to Cuba or something, and run away from it. Finally, I got such a reputation for this. I said, "Don't bother with it. She won't do it." And a trick was played on me. A man came to me and said, I understand you're going to do a play that Hungarian's writing, but while the translation is being made, or it's already been written, uh, don't you think you ought to find out whether you like the stage, or more important, whether the stage likes you? Mm. What do you say to that? Well, look at this jaw, you know. I said, what do you mean? And I he said, we'll go right, right up to the sticks, and you can try it out. There'll be no critics up there, no. And you know, I had so, everybody so terrified that I was going to open my mouth, and not a peep would come out that they were, they were, I, well, I was numb. You could have stuck hat pins in me and I wouldn't have felt it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'm gonna go out there and make a fool of myself, open my mouth, nothing's gonna come out because although I had done talking pictures, I, so I, I felt maybe I was gonna be a deaf mute up there. What happened was I heard the first, my first words uh -huh. and they were so nervous and such wrecks thinking I wasn't gonna speak that they forgot their lines and I was cueing them. But I had the director sitting in the fireplace where I could see him. That was comfortable. <laughs> You've always been hard on directors. Uh, you had him in the fireplace? <laughs> yeah, well, there wasn't any fire there. No, I haven't yeah. been hard on directors. No, I, just, no. I was joshing. Uh, oh, you were. When David you? Niven was here, he told a funny story about an opening night he was on with you, and you came on and said... Oh, what a tired something... story that is. I wish David Niven would find another story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell him too. Yes. Uh, it was something. Yes, I remember when he arrived in California and I befriended him. Yeah. So, uh, someday, I hope he can hear this. <laughs> well, I, I didn't think the story was against you, it was against your dress. No, no, it was what happened before. Something all popped that. up out no, of your no, dress. No, no, that's what happened. He had never been on the stage, you see, and I yeah. chose him, unfortunately, for my sake, because he was naughty. He was very naughty to me. Naughty? Yes. 
Well, he was a much. perfect gentleman here. Of course, in the drawing room and on the, in front of the public, but he was naughty on that stage. He was, and he knows it, I'm sure. Uh, how was he naughty, exactly? Oh, now, come on, now. <laughs> I mean, would he play tricks on the other actors? The cad. No, no. No, it was a, no. an unfortunate thing. It was a thing called Nina, a play called Nina. And it had, from the very beginning, it had a bad start, and everything went wrong, and um, it wasn't helped by um, lots of nonsense that went on. That were, that okay. was really unprofessional, that is, that way. Hmm? Okay. Poor David. Well, I've said this to his face, so it's not... <laughs> I guess you would. Now a word from the people who make kids grasshoppers. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. I'll try. My, do you know that your name rearranged the letters spells own a glass iron? Oh, please. I don't know what that, I have this strange <laughs> affliction where I might rearrange people's names. Own oh, a glass no, iron. Lovely. Or now a glass iron. <laughs> and my next guest's name rearranged spells real seal stench. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, because uh, she's such a superb actress. I've, everyone has uh, admired her in films and on the stage and her one woman show is charming, unpredictable. Last time she was here, she made a curious confession. Will you welcome the terrific Miss Elsa Lanchester. I do apologize about real seal stench, but I didn't have time to work out all of the no, possibilities. No, back there we couldn't quite hear what was going on. What did you say? Seal stench? <laughs> yeah, that, if you rearrange the letters of your name. I was trying to make, sometimes I was trying to make, oh, amuse myself. Is that an anagram? Sense. An anagram, I believe is what it's yes, called. Yes, I've never known, thank you. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I had to be the one to tell you. Yes. How, how are you? You were passing through the city, I, yes, I believe. Yes, when I see you here. here, I'm usually... Well, I like to collect a lot of things to do at once, being a true Californian, and come here and, you know, ram them all into a few days. So this time I had to talk at Michigan University, and it was a sort of small Lawton Festival. I know that... Uh, oh, yeah, you're very big on campus, with, uh, and with the Lawton Festivals especially, I guess. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. so since I've seen you, I've done one or two. Yeah. But um, it's a very good way of getting around. It's a very good way of keeping contact and seeing that you're, you still have a kind of connection with young people. Do you uh -huh. know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I love to see a crowd of young people laughing. But in this case, Michigan University, there's um, Donald Hall is now my co-author on the Lawton book. There is going to be see. a book about Lawton, yes, finally. Yes, finally. I've Good. talked a lot. Well, a great deal of research was done. And unfortunately, I talked about it. You know, you come to these talk shows and you've got to talk about something. But it was a little premature. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so he put on a little festival so that he could see a few Lawton pictures. His name's Donald Hall. The research is done and we're full speed ahead. And Doubleday is publishing it, enough said, because I expect I'll be on here pushing it well, in you're about welcome. a, in you're about a year. And maybe you'll have Donald Hall, too, for that matter. Did you get so, any letters about your interesting confession the time you were here before? Which Did confession? <laughs> we'll see, which one was it? <laughs> you, you, uh, oh, how can I put my, this gracefully? Oh, you mean about my being illegitimate? Yes, you admitted oh. to bastardy. Oh, we, we sort of played around with the word, yes, because now you can say things that really you, you couldn't say before. Well, you, then there was never anything, I mean, there was never anything really wrong with the word bastard. It's not a, except it can be used as a derogatory word, but it's a, yes. it describes yes. a specific fact. I mean, things have changed a great deal. For instance, now if you call a person a virgin, it's uh, slanderous. <laughs> One you have to be able to prove it, I believe. That's the great thing about going around the campuses. <laughs> well, I mean, I was, I was simply following up with the logic of what you said. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but did you get letters from, from, from uh, um, other folks in no. the same situation as you? Uh, no, I didn't get any. I heard you sort of playing around with the subject later on another program. Well, it came you up know. because people were rather startled and thought that yeah. uh, uh -huh. it was courageous. I don't know why. Uh, you had nothing to do with the, what your parents did before you were no, on no, the scene. No, no, no. That's... Um, so, let's well, anyway, see. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, Michigan uh, is... Uh, oh, I, I'll tell you about something I know about you, that you. You're writing a cookbook. Oh, that's, I call that a hobby. Because hobby. Uh, I have been working on a musical uh, that was got together, but was kind of just left because everyone disappeared. It's a, uh, it's a musical <laughs> based on The Dog Beneath the Skin by Auden and Isherwood. <laughs> Do you know, know the play? That, it was no. written in the 30s, and it's very, it's a man that disappears from the establishment and becomes a dog, changes himself so that people think he's a dog. 
Do you see? Anyway, it's a very, yeah. uh, very good idea, and the music has been written by Raymond Henderson, who's uh, composed a lot of songs for me and arranged a lot of things. Anyway, Christopher Isherwood, who, by the way, uh, sent his best to you. Oh, yes, he was on yes. here one day. And he lives next door to me, <coughs> and um, so they worked on it. Ray Henderson and Christopher. And at first, Burgess Meredith was on it. It was his idea to do it in the first place. Now I came on the scene and I have given it form and an ending which it's never had. In other words, I found that I'm a rather good play doctor. So the, uh, the cookbook is, it's a diet cookbook, but I draw funny pictures uh, for it, you know, and I find poems about uh, food, yeah. I find poems that are so, uh, make food sound so horrible that you don't want to eat anyway. You know, it's a funny book. I Maybe mean, just I, what the country's been needing. <laughs> let, let me just take a message, Miss Lance, we'll yes. be right back. After this message, my local station. <laughs> One member of the U.S. Uh, Congress voted against American entry into World War II against Japan, and the vote was not surprising because that same member of Congress had voted against American entry into World War I. Jeanette Rankin uh, of Montana voted against the war in both cases, and uh, she recently was voted as the first member of the Susan B. Anthony Hall of Fame from the uh, National Organization of Women. And Jeanette Rankin was born in 1880. She will be 92, 92 years old on June 11th, and she is still uh, in there fighting. Will you welcome, please, uh, Ms. Jeanette Rankin. Would you say that you were, would it be fair to call you a premature women's liberationist before they even had the phrase? Well, it seemed premature to me, mm -hmm. but I, I was very late because the women started in 1848, a women's rights convention, and right. at the end of that convention, they decided to ask for the vote. Then the women became interested in getting the vote. Mm -hmm. And so they waited till they got the boat, and then the war divided them and changed the side so that they didn't get on with the woman's right until later. So you, you were rather, you were behind your time, if you feel, yeah. rather than ahead of it, even though you're, you're still, uh, still in there. Because, yeah. oh, and uh, today we're facing an election, and my slogan now is, governments make war and the only way we can stop war is to have something to say about our government mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> so i think the elections are very timely i'm glad they come as often as they do Great. because it provides a topic of conversation <laughs> There's better than more topics. And I think that we sh all know that we can't express our feelings with the machinery by which we vote today. They usually put up two of a kind, and then you can choose one or the other. And I think that we should have a chance to have a direct vote for the president. Mm -hmm. And that everybody who wants to run, there aren't more than 15 or 20 who really want to be president, mm -hmm. and let them all run. And everyone vote for their first choice, their second choice, or their third choice, or the fourth, and so on. I see, you'd vote in order of preference. Your preference. Mm -hmm. And it's called a preferential vote. And now, we advocated this. I spoke in Carnegie Hall in 1917, and I talked for direct election of president. I didn't mention the preferential, because at that time, we, it would take so long to count the vote. But today we have an right. optical character recognition machine that they use for Social Security. Mm -hmm. So we have the machine, 
and they could count the vote the first time. And then we could do without the Electoral College. Uh, yes, that. and all the uh, other yeah. the parties could have their convention and have their balloons and write up. <laughs> write a platform and endorse a president, but they couldn't select the one that we could vote for. We'd have a great number to vote for. And I think during this election, everyone should think about having a better method of selecting the president, because if you're, uh, they've always had sprinter parties, but the, parties. Yeah. but the vote of the sprinter party was never counted, because if their first choice fell, all their votes fell. If they and today they can have a, a preference. If they can't get their first, they might get their fourth or fifth, and uh, they would select the president on the basis of their ideas. There'd be... Uh, Interesting to see that tried. It's it, um, very simple to try, because all you have to do is pass a, a, a bill for a constitutional amendment saying you want a direct preferential vote for president. Then they could work out the details of how it would be carried on. I think it sounds like an excellent idea. Can you remember um, campaigning in Montana back in the old days? Uh, oh, old yes. I was reminded last week, a week or two ago, I spoke in the same hall to the Montana Constitutional Convention that I made my first speech in, in 1911. Wow. In the same hall. And, uh, well... Someone said to mention Ballard. I think it was Ballard, Montana, to you? No, uh, was it with... Ballard, Washington. That was my... Oh, Ballard, Washington. My first experience in really working on my own. Mm -hmm. I'd been a social worker and decided that the government controlled so many conditions that women should have a vote. And they sent me to Ballard, and I worked a week. I got a place to speak in the city hall, and got a speaker, and got notices in the paper, and tried to get the women there. And when the meeting was called, there were eight people present. Eight? <laughs> eight people? <laughs> was, that a, was that a disaster, or how many well, people I were there? I thought it was a disaster. <laughs> and when the campaign was over, one of the women said, when we saw what you did in Ballard, we decided not to waste you on a little town like that. It was I remarkable to get eight people in Ballard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Thank you very much, Ms. Rankin, for being here. Thank it was a great you. pleasure. To, uh, Wednesday, Henry Fonda, Deborah Carr, Sandy Duncan, Alexander Cohen, tomorrow night's basketball. And uh, uh, women just seem to get more and more interesting as they age. We'll see you. <laughs> uh, guest is here not in uh, blue or anything else but her real in her real colors which are wonderful uh, she's currently starring in the hit broadway musical follies uh, it was nominated by the way for 11 tony awards and she's received a nomination for best actress in a, in a musical i almost said in a muscatel what's wrong with me please welcome one of the most talented and lovely actresses i ever heard of miss alexis smith <laughs> I'm all out of breath from my... It's nice to be back on your class show again. <laughs> <laughs> Man in the wings with his clothes half off, getting yes. dressed. I just hope I didn't shock anyone backstage. <laughs> I had uh, pie everywhere. I know. Uh, from the waist up. Yes. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Dick. Good to see you. Thank you. Say, you, uh, was this true about 11 Tony Awards, or did I misread something? No, the show? that is true, and I think uh, more than any other musical received happily, and... and uh, yeah. We're all in the company. We're all very, very pleased and are very you, Are proud. you? Or, I was going to ask if you were pleased, depressed, excited, indifferent, or any of the above. All of them, I think. I, even indifferent? Oh, no, not oh, indifferent. I slipped one no, in. No, no. Do you no, want to win? That's what I want to say. Do you want to win? Yes. Win. 
Yes. yes. Oh, you did, did you ever hear anyone say they wanted to lose? Oh, masochists. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm not well, a masochist. You're not, but you're, you're up, and so is, uh, I mean, among the other things in the show, you're uh, among the things that are up, among yes. the people that are up, are you? Dorothy. And Dorothy Collins. Also is a, a best actress. That's right. And in the Jean, same show? Yes. Are you Jean. putting pins in little dolls? Of each other? <laughs> no, I don't. It is a peculiar thing, you know, because actually I think any time you... We are now in competition. Well, anyone who is nominated for a Tony in any category, of course, is competing. Mm -hmm. And it's peculiar to compete uh, volu involuntarily. I think normally somebody says you want to play tennis, yeah. and you say yes, and you're, you're going to compete with someone. But in this instance, you are, it's thrust upon you, and suddenly you are com competing. And, of course, I'm sure everyone's hoping to win. Yeah, it's funny to think of it as a race, because acting isn't bad. I mean, you don't try to beat the other people out. No, indeed not. I, mean, you I don't know, know how you could go on stage each night. And win. I mean, I yes, get there Georgia first. <laughs> get your lines out fast. Yeah, get to the calls first. Yeah. It's such a good award show, the Tony show. It's, I mean, it's a, every year they, they do a good show. Yes, I, I recall last year it was a wonderful show, and they yeah. started each, each year, I think, started in the 20s or something, the 50 years of the Tonys, and it's... Yeah. Um, it's very effective, and of course, uh, I think uh, it lends itself perhaps more to uh, um, a television spectacular than, than perhaps the Oscar does because of, of the yeah. musicals that are involved in the, in the show itself. I, I like the Oscar show, though, for the sappy things that people say when they come out. I would love to know what Liza Minnelli didn't say. Remember, she said, I'm not doing what's on the card. Would you flip it over? Oh, no, I didn't you know, see those, that. Those things they that. write for Yes. <laughs> Uh, what are you studying now? The last time you were here, you were using every spare moment uh, to master languages and learn canoeing, or I forget what the things, various <laughs> things were now, but there were a lot of them. Well, I continue to do that. Uh, not this week, as a matter of fact, because I'm kind of involved in fittings and, and appearances and that sort of thing because mm -hmm. of the Tonys. But um, dancing, of course, and singing, and um, solfege and Spanish, and... Uh, solfege? Yes. Uh, that has to do with music? Mm-hmm. 20 questions. <laughs> um, it's, um, solfege. It has to do with, ah, ha, 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 ha. Intervals, yes. Yeah. Mm. Guess we cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I honestly, if I had to explain solfege, I don't suppose I could. You're studying music. Well, it has to do with ear training. And, uh, oh. it's interesting that that's, uh, that, uh, many, many professional singers, as a matter of fact, have not studied it, if they've studied exclusively. But then one can, if they're very adept at it, can read music Mm -hmm. Cold and without accompaniment, and that's uh, I'm I'm not developed at that point, but that's quite an accomplishment, and certainly yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sure that serious singers in in opera that sort of, sort of thing would tend to study it more than. And what will you be able to do uh, once you know solfege cold? Uh, well, firstly, it, it helps me. It helps me as far as as uh, singing the limited kind of singing that I do. It helps me enormously, and 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 my ear is more acute, and I tend not to sing flat or sharp, and be more true. Yeah. And aside from that, it's, it's, um, I enjoy music more as a result of knowing more about music. You just hear more. Probably. Yes, you really hear more. It's the same. Yeah. But we, we, it's interesting to me. We have, uh, God gave us five senses that are really quite extraordinary if you stop and think about them. You want yeah. to stop and think about them? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to stop and think about them for a moment. Uh, we're back, we're back. Yes. And uh, we're talking about the Tony Awards before, and somebody said that uh, anything that, any prize that there is available, uh, if you were to look at the number of people who haven't gotten it, and the list of the people who have, uh, we were just talking about this during the break, it would be hard to tell who were the, what was the winning list and what was the losing list. Yes, you know what indeed. I mean? Well, particularly, yeah. I have a list of the You theater, did that. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Ethel Merman has never won a Tony. Lynn Fontaine, Lee J. Cobb, Marlon Brando, Sir Lawrence Olivier, Sir John Gielgud, Danny Kaye, Barbara Streisand, Julie Andrews, George C. Scott, he wouldn't have accepted it even if he had, <laughs> and Catherine Hepburn. Now you almost want all, people all, lo all no, well, yes, all losers, I suppose. Those are all That's losers. quite a list of losers, isn't it? That's why no one's ever heard of any of those names. So <laughs> they never got anywhere. Have you ever won an Emmy? Yes, I won one Emmy. I but, figure one is plenty, you know. Yes, no, for what was that? Uh, I had a television show. When? And I was, uh, I was, um... Are we on TV now? Oh. Oh, it's so low out there. No, I won, uh, I, my daytime show, uh, Beat Hollywood Squares. <laughs> That's the truth. Now, you've not won for nighttime. Oh, no, I didn't want to hog them. 
No, I see it. Have you been nominated? Oh, yes, I'm always nominated. Yes. How many, how many times have you lost? Uh, what was the question and how what was the answer? <laughs> how many times have you lost? I don't consider it losing. I, I, I pass the honor to other people. Oh, I see. Oh, that's marvelous. Yeah. I like that. Because I felt that uh, various, like, like, poor immigrant people and all would like to win one occasionally. And, and, uh, Such as? Uh, people from other countries. Uh, to whom did you, to whom did you pass <laughs> land. And so I, I, I graciously uh, rigged it so I would lose year after year. I see. <laughs> Do you <laughs> I don't know, know what I'm talking about? Michael Bennett, who uh, did the choreography and co-directed our show and is considered by most, I'm sure, the best choreographer on Broadway, has, uh, or among the best, certainly, no. uh, has, uh, is a five-time loser, I think. Has never won a, a Tony. He can hardly keep his head up a bit. I know, and he's, he, he was in Paris, and he said he really didn't know whether he wanted to come all the way back to lose again or not. <laughs> Wait, well, it shouldn't be considered losing. I mean, like you were saying before, it's not a race. It isn't as if there are 100 yards in acting. And some people run all the 100 yards, and some people run 99. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't it be interesting if they could prove how uh, Laurence Olivier fell short of Burt Lancaster? I you know, the year that Laurence Olivier was beaten by Burt Lancaster in the Oscars. I mean, if they could actually show, if yes. it were an actual race, then they could presumably show exactly what Olivier left out that Lancaster had in. But you know, you know I mean? the interesting thing is, I think, that there is no way to judge, really, and that's what art is about, that one cannot put, measure it really yeah. precisely to, uh, you know, any degree of who is better or who is not or what. Because you're supposed to be taxed on yeah. income, not on, on your, uh, the bracket that you're in in, in well, life. What's the theory behind that? Is it considered some sort of luxury to be single? And uh, you're supposed well, to you be know, willing to pay for no, the nose No, but you know, now the people, that, the married people who, as a couple, uh, single tax, if they separate and live in sin, they can have a lesser tax than if they have now, because if they both work, it's not... That's where they get the expression sin tax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What's wrong with me? I'm may, sorry. May I really say People that who think of things like that should have the decency not to say them. No, I think it's wonderful. I'm sorry. But if what, is, what should be done is, if anyone is really interested, and stop yapping about it, and stop just talking about it, uh -huh. but simply do something about getting a hold of a representative from Arkansas whose name is Wilbur Mills, and he's chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. I, it's a rather formidable thing to go down to Washington and have to talk to all those men. But you've actually done it. You've gone I down just and did put their, in your, what, 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 your My two last day work. off was a Monday. Yeah. And uh, so I went down there, and, and everybody uh, who has wants to speak can do so. And help, because they need support. You mm -hmm. see, the public, in a way, will only help them. And uh, it's a call of Koch's bill. He's uh, uh, from New York City. He's a representative. Mm -hmm. K-O-C-H. Yeah. And uh, that number is uh, um, R, um, no, HR, uh, 850. Now, just go to your, just write letters to Wilbur Mills in the, in, in the House of Representatives in, in Washington, D.C., and say you don't want to pay these taxes. <coughs> Because it's something, it's, it, something really has to be done about it. For instance, I have worked since I was 14 and a half years old. You know that I've been single most of the time, although I've been married a few times. <clears throat> um, well, I always supported anybody anyway within the perimeter of my life. And so uh, I imagine I can't even take depreciation at a certain age. A horse can, but I can't. Depreciation? Yes, of course, as you grow older. But uh, aside from that, I, <laughs> well, you can, you can with everything else, an automobile, a home, and the whole thing. So why shouldn't I be able to? Appreciation on, on, on your yes, parts? Yes, you, don't you know? Well, no, I mean, how would you? Well, no, uh, but your opportunities in the performing yeah. arts might be lessened as oh, you grow sure. older yeah. and your yeah. talents, etc. Yeah. You might become hard of hearing, say to the other actor, hmm, I didn't hear you. Yeah. And uh, a lot of things could happen. And then also, th you have to pay uh, in advance. Now, estimated tax. Have you any idea what you're going to make next year? I haven't the slightest. Depends on how long the play lasts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's and do you know that you are, are you're penalized 6% if you, if you don't estimate it properly? Now, you know, this is madness. Well, that really, is. the men who are trying to do something about this do want support, and they know, too, that they have to do something about it. The election is coming up, you know, and really and truly, this is important as taxing. Good time to be because yeah. we talk about uh, the United States is, is, uh, United States is uh, spending $20 billion or something here or there and the other way. Not, they don't have a suit to spend. Who's spending it? We are. It's taking it from, from us. And the people who can't cover it up, like, for instance, I know that I've paid more than oil men and a lot of millionaires and a lot of uh, corporations, incidentally, and crooks. I've paid more in my life. Why? Because it's taken from the source. It's taken from us. Now, if you don't have a salaried thing, 
And I'm sure a lot of our listeners here are salaried, where it's taken right at the source. They don't even see if they saw it. That's another story. There's a Let's life... Did you, do you, do you know? Oh, West, excuse me. Just a minute, Mr. Lawrence. I'll clear up. Uh, we'll come right back. Ow. Let's see, our teleprompter is fuse blue, and so I, whatever I'm supposed to read, I can't see at the moment. So think of something delightful. Here we are again. Well, just, just let me We've close been... in this text thing by yeah. saying a little... There's so many elements involved, which makes it fa any art form fascinating. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's why it's different from sports. And... Mm -hmm. Chaplin, you know, as you know, obviously everyone in the world knows now, never won an Oscar till this year, and it was an honorary Oscar. I always thought what a temptation it would have been for somebody all those years, particularly when he was in trouble, uh, to take his uh, Oscar and say, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing you fantasize about. I I'm mailing this to Charlie Chaplin. Because he just... And uh, with Hedda Hopper and everybody sitting right down front. Oh, he hated Chaplin all those years. That would have been... It would have been fun. lovely. <laughs> because we're all indebted to, you know, all who preceded us, of course. And yeah in this or any other profession, but, uh, and his contribution, goodness knows, was enormous to the yeah. picture industry. I had something funny the other day, Dan, with Dan Daly, as a matter of fact, and Dan said he always felt that Jackie Coogan had done more for Chaplin than Chaplin had done <laughs> for Jackie Coogan. It's a novel it's opinion. It's a funny thought. Yeah. Jackie Coogan is, is the little kid in The Kid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, has you, have you ever had problems because of your height? I was no, have saying, you? <laughs> Get away from me! <laughs> you might knock some more of it off. I, uh, no, I, I just meant I couldn't help noticing when you walked out that you're just sickeningly tall. You know? <laughs> I mean, Should we go on to another yeah, subject? People go to bed short all over the world, and I just wonder. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I wondered if you ever got to, if they if forever, you know, if you ever, if you ever couldn't play a role because there was a, a, a man who was um, a shrimp, as you would probably call it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <playing> the, <laughs> yes, no, I have had that problem, and the, you know, the gentleman used to use apple boxes. They, say, they well, always say that. Get an apple box for what? To see, in, playing love scenes with the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Must have looked so funny to the crew to see a stubby little fellow standing on a, on a box, <laughs> uh, uh, kissing a statuesque person like yourself. Yes, well, I never wore shoes, of course, you know, until finally I worked with um, Joel McRae, who's very tall. And even to me, he's tall. You know, he's, I think he's about 6'5", and it was just wonderful, because it was the first time I'd, I wore, wore heels, and, and I would kiss him and look up. You know, that great line that ladies, short ladies get when they kiss men, you know, which I never... Stretches so, your neck yes, out. Yes, yes. Yeah. Joel McRae is terrific. I, I, I saw Buffalo Bill. I, I saw it 16 times, or 15. I've forgotten whether... Jim McConnell saw it 16, I saw it 15, or which. He was Who's my, Jim McConnell? Well, he was my friend in Nebraska, oh, and we would go to... Yes. <laughs> well, I want to keep... <laughs> you, you, you'd like him. He's normal size. Yes, he's tall. <laughs> yeah. We have a station break. We'll be right back. <laughs> the Dick Cabot Show with Gloria Swanson, Alexis Smith, Elsa Lanchester, and Jeanette Rankin. We'll continue. I, I'm quite sure that if I... Uh, asked everyone sitting in this theater to name great ladies of the screen, and everybody's list would be Gloria Swanson, Miss Gloria Swanson, as they would say about ladies of the screen. And uh, she's an extraordinary woman uh, at 72, uh, still a working actress drawing sellout crowds uh, on Butterfly, uh, or Broadway if you prefer, or on Butterflies with Broadway is free. Let's start this sentence again, boys and girls. Butterflies are free is the name of the show, and here's the lovely and remarkable Gloria Swanson. <laughs> Not 72. You're 73? I'm always a, a year older than the age after March. Th then, then the, oh, you're... 72, year, isn't it? A year older than the century itself. Yeah. Than, than the 20th century. Yeah. That is astounding. 73 instead of, uh, in March, I was 73. May I say I admire you so much, Miss Smith. And uh, tremendously, I should say, I've always wanted to be your, your height. Oh. Yes, when I was playing femme fatales, it was kind of silly. A half pint like me walking around as if I were... Well, where is your height? Where does the thing come on a scale on your head when you stand on the, gym, well, on the gymnasium scale? Well, I did scale? get about an inch and a half when I was about 28. I grew. I think it was because I was having a lot of massage, and I think they pull on your leg and your spines. You know, a lot of policemen used to go about 
uh, when they weren't quite six feet, and we used to have them, they had to be six feet. And so they'd go and get a lot of massage and stretching, then run quickly, and they were six feet tall. I've heard of that. They, yes, that's true. Cup stretcher. So I was about, uh, <laughs> I was only Mary Pickford's height, actually, but she always affected being short, wearing uh, short heels or no heels at all, and I was going around in these tremendous things, three-inch heels. Well, I didn't kill myself, I don't know. Falling off your heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You, so, you look so wonderful, as everyone knows, uh, and of course they always add for 73. Um, of course, but, but you, I, look, you look wonderful for 43. It is a question of look. I, I wish everybody could feel as well as I do. I really do. I have a sense of well-being. I, I think you, you feel better than I do. You've got, <laughs> well, you have amazing well, energy and well, that I have. And all of that. Uh, how many times a year do you eat? You're so thin. <laughs> no, I have youngsters that are working in the play with me. You know, butterflies are free. There are three of them, and they're also tired, and they're also exhausted, and they have uh, flu or, or virus X or something all the time. They keep looking at me. When is she going to collapse? You know, it doesn't happen. Well, I better shut up or, you know, I mustn't brag, must I? How, how, do you, how, have you, uh, how are you affected by this time of year, March 15th and all that? Oh, oh, taxes, haven't you seen is what that a, I've been? Is that a tactless you know, thing? You know, I'm, I'm a George. Do you know what that means, to be a George? Is that a zodiac sign? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's no, right, no. It's a new kind I'm, of astrology. I'm, uh, I'm uh, Aries. No, what it is is that people who do things and don't talk about them but do them are called Georges, and a lot of people complain and then they look to a George to do something about it so I've been yapping and yelling about food for years and years but because I have a sense of well-being that I think people have if they eat properly and don't have to eat poisons and how how can you be happy if you're worried sick to death if you have taxes that are unreasonable no inequitable is the best word for it and so I've been down in Washington a George again and uh, at the hearings and um, speaking my piece about this did you know that single people pay more taxes than married people I, I know that you know something about this and i don't know much about it but uh, um well, how, how does most, that work well it's unfortunate because yeah. let us assume and most you know men decide to depart from this planet before their wives mm -hmm. and then what happens is that uh they pay them a combined tax when they were married Mm -hmm. And then when uh, he goes bye-bye, she has the inheritance tax on the money that he already ma made, you see, they made together. Yeah. And then on top of that, she has to pay a bigger tax because in, as a single person now, she pays more. And this is what's so unfair because there are millions and millions of people who are either widowed or a, a widower or a widow. And also you have a divorced person who has to mm. pay more. Now they've got a new one, which is if two people work in the family, the married couple, yeah. Now they have to pay a, a more, and uh, it's, it, it, the, you know that there are 33 feet of books on taxes, and not even the experts can possibly know what happened. You know, it's all crept do. up on us, you know, it's really, yeah. nobody minds paying taxes, providing they're equitable, but you, and it's unconstitutional to uh, say, well, because you're single, you have to pay more than a married person, mm -hmm. uh, or any of that, it's, be, 